All right, Jody Arias on the stand. This is live testimony that you're watching. They're at a sidebar right now. Uh, when we come back, that testimony resumes, and it seems she's getting into her childhood where her mom, the woman seated on the right, carried a wooden spoon in her purse. Is that why she killed Travis Alexander? Okay. Okay. You were just now telling us uh, that your mother carried a spoon with her. What did she do with that spoon? Um, it was um, a wooden kitchen spoon that she would keep in her purse and um, if we were misbehaving, my brother and I, this was before Angela and Joseph were born, um, although it continued through that point. If we were misbehaving, she would use it on us. Sometimes she would pull the car over and, you know, if we were just being brats or something. What do you mean by use it on you? Um, she would hit us with it. She hit you hard? It felt pretty hard, yes. I left welts. You left welts on your body? Mm -hmm. Yes. When your dad hit you with the belt, did that leave welts on your body? Just like a foundation. Refresh. You told us that your dad hit you with the belt? Yes. After age seven? Yes. Did he leave welts? Um, he didn't leave welts as often as my mom. She also used to belt. Um, he, my dad was very intimidating, so I don't think he needed to hit us quite as hard to get the point across. My mom didn't carry that fear factor with her, so I think she used more force. So her blows felt a lot worse, actually. Physically or emotionally? Both. You loved your mother? Yes. And she hit you? Yes. You said that these were frequent, these incidents where your mother would hit you, they were frequent and intense. I think those are your words, right? They were definitely intense, but they increased in frequency okay. as I got a little older. Can you discern for us how many times a week your mother would beat you with this spoon? Um, I don't recall how many times particularly, but it seemed like it could go anywhere from four times to week, a week to um, once every two weeks. It just depended. Okay. Now, how long did you live in Salinas? How old were you? Um, I was born there and I lived there until age 11. Okay. So, let me ask you this, that you talked about these uh, beatings that began at age seven um, when you lived in Salinas. Um, tell us about the next few years before, before you left Salinas. Did you continue going to school, that sort of thing? Tell us about that. Yes, I went to a public school, um, had a lot of friends. Um, my brother was at that school too, and he had his own circle of friends. And. Um, we would just do things together, school activities, after school activities. And, um, activities, what were your interests at this point in time in your life? Um, I began to get into art. Um, again, my pets were very central in my life at that time. Um, we began to, I began to read a lot of books. I took piano lessons, my brother and I took karate lessons. Um, he learned the clarinet. I learned flute, things like that, just general. Okay. Do me a favor, because when you say the word art, it can mean a lot of things uh, to a lot of different people in terms of art. It's a pretty broad area. So are there certain areas of, of the art world that you were interested in, or can you describe that for us? Yeah, I liked, well, when I was younger, I liked to color, with, just with Crayolas. And um, my older sister and I would color, and we there were a lot of colors, just... She had the big um, box with all of the Crayolas, and so we would draw pictures and just watch cartoons and that kind of thing. So um, I would have coloring books, and um, I just began to take an interest in that because I wasn't able to draw what I saw, but I would see 
um, art, and it would just, it would fascinate me. So um, I slowly began to practice doing that. Okay. Now at this point in time, did the, the beatings from your mother and father, did they continue? Yes. Did they increase in nature? Um, they tended to, they began to increase, I'd say, all the way through my teenagers. Did they increase, you've talked about frequency and severity. Did, did the level of the brutality increase? Yes. My brother and I um, would, we didn't like being hit. I didn't, I know I didn't. So we would squirm around a little, and so the more we squirmed, the harder they would try to whack us. Um, so just as that progressed, we, things would increase, you know, at one point. Um, I don't think she meant to, but my mom broke my brother's vein in his wrist. Was, he was putting his hand behind his back to block um, one of her blows. And, um, you know, as I became a teenager, my dad would get rougher and rougher. Okay. Before we go on to rougher and rougher, let me ask you this, and I'm not simply talking physically. How did they feel? How did you feel when your own mother was beating you? Um, when I was younger, I remember feeling, I didn't have a word for it then, but I can describe it as betrayed um, and confused. And as I got a little bit older, it would just really make me mad because I just, I didn't get why, I don't know, I understood that I was being punished, but I would just be mad at her a lot over that because it hurt. Because you still loved her? Yeah, I loved my mom. Even though she was still getting you, you still loved her? Yes. It put a strain on our relationship, but I still loved her, of course. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. I still loved her. Okay. Going back to what you said a few minutes ago <clears throat> about your dad and the beatings getting rougher and rougher. Um, could you describe for us what you mean by that? Yeah, he, um, well, he never beat me with his fists or anything, but he would just shove me into furniture, sometimes into the piano or um, things like that, what, into tables, chairs, desks, whatever was around. He would just push me really hard and I would go flying into that. Um, one time I hit a doorpost the side of my head hit the doorpost and it knocked me out momentarily. Um, I just remember waking up on the ground with, my mom was there, we were all arguing. I was arguing with my mom and he got involved. And so I remember waking up and she was telling him to be careful. And this incident you just described about you passing out or knocking into a door, door frame or doorpost as you described it. Do you remember how old you were when this happened? By then I was age 17, maybe 16, but I think I was 17. Okay. Let's back up a little bit because you talked about instances of you being pushed into furniture and a piano, like it was just like nothing to it. Um, did this happen a lot? Not as often with my dad as with my mom, but um, it's just, I don't know, if, if I did something to upset them, it would, it would happen. Okay. Sometimes I got grounded. That became more the norm in high school, so the, the physical punishment was a little bit more farther apart, but more intense than it was prior. At this time that you were getting these beatings from your dad, did you love him as well? Yes, of course. In, the, in this time period now, you said you moved from Salinas about age 11? Yes. Okay. And where did you move to? We moved to Santa Maria, California. Okay. And I know we talked about this is where Santa Maria, your dad was pushing you into furniture, right? Is this where these, these things Yeah, these things place? really started um, in Santa Maria. Okay. And was that where you went to, would that have been 
your junior high years, if I follow that correctly? Yeah, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Okay. And did you go to school with Carl then? I did. Okay. And what's your, what were your interests at that point in time? Um, at that point, um, I was really focused on trying to make new friends. That was kind of difficult. Um, in sixth grade, I went to an elementary school, and then in seventh grade, I went to another new school for, it was called junior, it was junior high school, then it's now middle school, I guess. But, um, so it was just, it seemed like I was constantly going to new schools. There was this new school, then another new school, and then, you know, then we moved again. And so it was just hard to make friendships. I did make a few close friends, though. Okay. Well, you mentioned earlier that in your grade school years, you had an interest in art. Yes. Okay. Did that continue through junior high? Definitely. I don't remember so much in sixth grade focusing on my art, but in junior high, um, I took an art class, maybe two art classes both years, um, and I had a really cool art teacher, and he mentored me. Okay. Let me ask you, as it relates to your parents, uh, how was your interest in art received? Did they encourage that? How did that? How did? It, how was it received by your parents? Um, they didn't discourage me by any means, but they were lukewarm, I'd say. You know, I was like, oh, that's nice. They weren't really moved by it, I don't think. I was getting a lot of praise from my classmates and my um, art teacher and other people, but I didn't really get that from them. They were just a little bit indifferent, but not disappointed. Was that hard for you not to get encouragement from your parents? It didn't really bother me at that time. Um, I would think it was kind of the norm, so I was accustomed to it. Okay, by that time in your life, you were used to them not fostering out your, your interests, right? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Did your parents ever show any interest as you were growing up in your artwork? Did they ever foster your interest in art? Um, they did minimally at one point. Um, in, well, I think this was after I moved to Santa Maria. I was enrolled in one art class, which was after school, and it lasted a few weeks. We, I created a few pieces, a few projects, and um, I remember other family members being more encouraging. I have a cousin who's a very accomplished artist, and he complimented my work, and, um, and it was in the presence of my parents, so okay. they never really went out of their way to, you know, display it or anything like that, but... Um, where did you go to high school? I went to high school. Um, after eighth grade, we moved to Northern California, to Wairika. And um, I went to Wairika Union High School. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear you. You said Wairika called, something. At least when I was there, it's called um, Wairika Union High School. Okay. And I'll ask this because it's, it's uh, different in different places. What, what grades were you in when you entered Wairika High School? Um, that school is grades 9 through 10. I'm sorry, 9 through 12. Okay. So what years then uh, did you enter? Did you enter in your freshman year or, or later? Freshman year. Okay. And so you were starting off at a new school again in, in high school, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, and just... Uh, to give us a sense of things, uh, how far was Wairika from Santa Maria where you moved from? I don't know the mileage, but let's see, from Salinas to Santa Maria, it's eight hours, and then, it's, I'm sorry, Salinas to Wairika is eight hours, and then Santa Maria is another three hours south, so. Right. So you're several hours. Over 10 hours, right, yeah, so. over 10, yeah. Did you know anybody at Wairika High School when you were going? Um, I didn't know anybody when I moved there, but my mother um, went to, I don't know if she went to school with or knew another woman about her age who had a daughter my age that was going into freshman, going into high school as well. So we hung out a little bit during the summer, so I knew her and her sister, but that was it. Just a couple of people. Yes. 